Yes. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Hallelujah. This Sunday, I don't even know the date, May 23rd. 23rd. Glory yes. to God. We are gathered here um, at the temple. Glory to God. And the temple is wherever God is. That's where his presence is. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God reigns in this place on today, and we just are glad to be here. First Crown Ministry, Pastor Valerie Smith, and Minister Sandra Moore. Sandra Moore, praise the God. Praise the God. Oh, I'm happy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know. Every time I get happy, I, I keep on saying, praise the God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his name. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are glad to be in the house of the Lord. We're glad to be amongst believers, amongst fellow, so we can fellowship and enjoy Jesus. Hallelujah. On this day, I'm right excited because of what God is doing and what he has already done. I'm excited because of the Lord just blessing this minister as she be, gets ready. Hallelujah to to give us the word of the Lord for this season, for this time that we we'll have something that's applicable to apply to our life that take us from one dimension to the next dimension in Jesus. Hallelujah. She needs no introduction. Hallelujah. Nothing but her name because the Holy Spirit is going to speak oh, through her this day. Glory to God. And all the only thing that matters that his name be glorified and he be lifted high. We pray on today that God, hallelujah, anoint her afresh. Glory to God and the word of God. I be delivered to the people of God. I'm gonna move myself right on out the way. Hallelujah. I pray, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that God have his way and that he use you like he do. Hallelujah. I love him there. Hallelujah. Just to see how he move and how he do through his people. And in the name of Jesus, we just give him glory just for being here today. We bless you in Jesus' name. Talk to you soon. God bless you. Amen. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. 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 And hallelujah. I do give honor to God for this day. I give honor to God for being head of my life and being everything that I need and more. Amen. So we're not going to um, hold back anymore. We're going to ask Minister Charlene if she will come and give us a prayer, and then we're going to go right into the service, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you if you will turn to Genesis 16, that will be where we're coming from today, and Genesis 21. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we just thank you for this day, for thank this broadcast. God. We thank you that yes. you are moving by your yes. spirit. Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for you ministering to our servant leader here, yes. Sandra, Sandra, on today. Yes. God, I ask that you to use her, anoint her. God, use the kind of anointing that makes preaching Ooh. easy. And Father, let her convey the words, God, from your mouth, God, to the people, God, on today. Yes. Let them have open minds and hearts, God, to receive everything that you are saying. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And without any further ado, let's turn to Genesis, the 16th chapter. We're going to start at the third and fourth verse, and then we're going to go down to the 15th verse. Amen. And I'll be reading out of the open Bible, so it may be a little different, not a whole lot. Okay, chapter 16, verse 3. Then Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife after Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Verse 15, so Hagar bore Abraham a son and Abraham named his son whom Hagar bought Ishmael. Hagar bought Ishmael to Abraham. Now we're going to go over to verse 20, chapter 21, verses 10 through 13. Therefore, Abraham, therefore she said to Abraham, cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be hair with my son, namely with Isaac. 
And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad, hallelujah, or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac, your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the, I'm going to really focus on Ishmael today. The name Ishmael from the Arabic side means God hears and listens. On the Hebrew, it says God listens. And it is pronounced Ishmael. So with that being said, God can bring greatness out of a great mess. Hallelujah. God can be, bring greatness out of a great mess. Yeah. Have you ever went to the grocery store and you go down an aisle and there's a sign that says damaged goods? That might mean that some of the produce has been reduced or some of the cans may have been damaged in the process of transformation or transitioning. Some of the boxes may be crushed. They may not look good. They may have gotten wet. Whatever it may be, the outside mm -hmm. of this thing may have been damaged. Now, with that being said, let's look at what happened. Sarah was impatient. Sarah wanted to have a son. At this time, she didn't have one. So she asked her husband to go to her maid servant and go into her and marry her and conceive a child. Well, then she got mad with her own self. This is the outside box. This is the outer appearance. However, her heart was still good because she thought she was doing a good deed. God can bring greatness out of a great mess. So with that being said, we go to the store and we sometimes we still look at that can and we may pick it up. The labels may be torn or whatever, scratched up, whatever it may be. And we may say, well, you know what? I'm gonna get it anyway, just because it's at a good price. Mm -hmm. We'll go and we'll purchase that. Well, when we get home and we open up the can, there's nothing wrong with the content on the inside. It was the outer that was messed up. We can look at each other and say, man, I see that woman and she don't look like this or she don't look like that or he don't look like this or he don't look like because we're looking at the outer appearance. Sometimes our outer appearance can be deceiving. Yes. Is it sometimes? Most all the time, the outer appearance yeah. is deceiving because we don't look like on the inside what we have gone through on the outside. Praise God, Jehovah. Now it's a funny thing. We go and we buy those cans of peas and carrots and potatoes or corn or whatever it is. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with what's on the inside. Yeah. They have been dented and wrongly put on the shelf. So they'll take them off and say, well, we're not going to do that because it's not appeasing to the eyes. They look at it as being broken. Yeah. They look at it as being distorted. Yeah. They look at it as being no good. So if we reduce the price, mm -hmm. we can get it on out the way. Yeah. And we'll keep those cans and those boxes that are supposed to be of perfection. But how many of you know sometimes that that's on the inside of those perfected cans and boxes, that's what's distorted. That's what's no good. Yeah. That's what you need to throw out. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So Anyway, we buy them. We buy them at the price that they asked for instead of buying them at the full price. The rest of the can labels may be worn and discolored, but that doesn't matter. We got to look at our own lives in the same way. We may not look like 
somebody else. We may not act like somebody else. We may not have gone through what somebody else has gone through, but irregardless, the inside, mm -hmm. yeah. as long as Christ is on the inside, it's not distorted. It's not decontaminated. Yeah. It's, 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 it's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly formed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All of us in some way can live that life. And yeah. we do go around and we do make mistakes and we do do things that cause hurt and pain to our outer bodies but there's nothing wrong with the inner content hallelujah too many of us go around wearing damaged good labels on our forehead on our backs the way we act the way we talk those are all labels. But how many of you know if you will sit down and talk to that person or minister to that person, you will find out that there is some good deep down on the inside. And if you talk to them long enough, it'll begin to stir up and it'll become coming out on the outside. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we got to get rid of the section that we don't belong. We're not good enough. We're not able to walk with them or talk with them because we have discredited ourselves. Let me tell you something. Don't discredit yourself because God ain't made no mess. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And where you feel like you don't manage up or, or, or counter up to what somebody else do, you might have gone through a lot of things in life that you feel like, oh my God, I, I, I can't do this. I can't do that. God can bring greatness out of a great mess. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You may have been dented on the outside like those cans, but there's nothing wrong with your inside. The setback of different effect does not affect your DNA. Your DNA comes from your father. Yes. No, you may not have walked the correct line. No, you may not have walked the path that he has given to you. But still, there's some greatness in you. That's all the time. We don't ever know what our plan of life is. But he says, I know the plans that I have for you. And they are good and not of evil. You may not know. So you're doing the best thing you can do to make it the way you need to make it to. No matter what goes on in your life. No matter what you face in your life. No matter the downtrodden that you hear. No matter the rejection that you get. There's some greatness in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And if you'll stay with him, hallelujah, he'll pull it out of you. Yeah. And you'll begin to see, oh, well, you know what? I really want that bag. My, 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 my. I really want that bag. Go ahead. Um. Okay. I got this. I believe I can work with this a little bit. I believe if I stay with this man called God, he'll begin to change some things because I'm starting to see now the focus of what he had already had in plain, yeah. my God, my God, my God. Now, you can continue to wear them labels if you want to, mm. but not God will discredit you mm. because he knows. He said, I knew thee yes. when you were in the womb, even before you were formed, I knew you. My God, my God, you may have failed a lot of things. You may have lost but you're not a loser. Mm. You may have failed, but you're not a failure. You may not feel like you are favored, but that's not your label. Mm. That's not your label. This happened to this little boy named Ishmael. Mm. He was a child that was Abraham's, that was somewhat out of wedlock, but yet in wedlock, if you get what I'm saying. It didn't come from his first wife. It came from the maid servant who was still his wife. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Ishmael was not the promised child. He was born out of Abraham and Sarah's impatience that they got tired of waiting. How many of you know you got to wait on God? How many of you, you got to know that you got to wait on the plan that he has? Hallelujah. So when we begin to get impatient, things start to happening that we would not have to go through if we would just be patient. Hallelujah. I'm going to take myself for example, because see, I can't talk about nobody else. I can't talk about nobody else. I applied to nursing school. 
Go ahead. Years ago. Go ahead. Never got in. Had to keep going to classes, had to keep taking up classes that I'm like, okay, well, there's nothing else for me to take up. I've taken everything. Mm -hmm. I applied again and they told me, well, the classes are closed. You can't get in. I'm impatient. What do I do now? I'm just going to quit. I don't want to handle it no more. I don't want to go through it anymore. But I heard a wise woman say, it may not be now, but delayed is not denied. Come on. Delayed is not denied. Yes. You are impatient, but if you await, it ain't over. The fall hasn't got here yet. And when that fall comes, there may be a slot for you. Be patient. Mm. Hallelujah. Be patient and see what he has in store. Uh -huh. So they were impatient. They were very impatient. They wanted to have this child. They wanted to have this child. So when Hagar conceived, Sarah got made. Mm. She wanted to put her out. She despised her, the Bible says. And she told Abraham, send her out. Send her out, her and her son, not just her, but her and her son. Send them out. I don't want to see them. I don't want to have nothing to do with them anymore. But baby, it was you that started it. It was you that had the thought. So your outer shell was contaminated. Mm. It wasn't Hagar. She was just in the right place at the right time to do what needed to be done. Amen. Amen. So Sarah talked to her husband. She talked him into sending Hagar out. He was not game for that, if we want to say that. He wasn't game for that. But anyway, he did because he heard the voice of the Lord to say, do what Sarah's voice told you to do. I got a plan, God says. Mm. You don't know what that plan is. Mm. Hagar don't know what that plan is. Sarah don't know what that plan is. And poor Ishmael doesn't know what that plan is. But I got a plan. Just listen to her. Mm. She want to be foolish? Let her be foolish. I got a plan. Hallelujah. And I'm going to handle this thing. Ishmael was born in a dysfunctional home of distrust, confusion, and chaos. He was considered damaged good, a mistake that was the right one. <laughs> How many of you know, sometimes we do some things and we think it's a mistake, but yet it's right on time. It's the right mistake. Hallelujah. It was the right mistake. But one thing funny was Sarah had the idea that she got mad at Abraham for having a baby with another woman. She turned on her trusted maidservant and now she despised her and told her to get out. Get out of my house, get out of my sight, get out. Not just you, but your son. Now, you talk about being in a messed up situation. This child didn't know. Mm. All he knew that Abraham was his daddy. Mm. Why can't I be with my daddy? Why can't I be with my family? Why can't I be with people that I measure up to or I think I measure up to? Why can't I be with this group over here? Because they look like they got it going on. Why can't I be with this group over here? Because they praise is just right. Why can't I be with this group over here? Because they worship look just right. Why can't I be over here? Because they look like they got it going on. They look like they Bible readers, Bible scholars, Bible, Bible, Bible. Why can't I be? Because it ain't your time. That might not be where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. He has another plan. He has another plan for you. And all you got to do is stick with the plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when Ishmael got up, he's like, what, 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 what can I do? What can I do? I'm, I mean, I just want to be with my family. I just want to be where I need to be. Not always do you need to be where you think you need to be. Because God can bring greatness out of a great mess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He could have chose to been angry. He could have chose and went back and said a few words to Sarah. He could have denied his daddy, not had nothing else to do with him because you listened to your wife. And here I am with my mama. We ain't got nowhere to go. We roaming in the desert, just speaking, roaming in the desert, don't know where to go, ain't got no home. 
and you let this woman tell you to kick me and my mama out, he could have been messed up, dysfunction. How many of us are dysfunctional? We all are dysfunctional in one way or the other because our mindset gets altered. As, as we say in the medical field, we get AMS, altered mental status, All right. okay? <laughs> we get altered mental status sometimes and we don't know whether we coming or going, been there and come back, we don't know. Right hallelujah, hallelujah, we get dysfunctional. But God said, hold on, because uh -huh. I got something for you. Amen. If you'll just stay right here. So what he told Ishmael was, Hold on, baby. Change is coming. My God, my God, my God. Isaac was promised that he would be the child to receive the inheritance. And he did. Amen. But God had a plan for Ishmael. Right he told the father, Abraham, I'm going to bring a great nation out of this son, your seed. Yeah. What does that say about us? If we'll stay in line with God, if we'll keep our focus on him and not look to the left and look to the right and conjugate over here and conjugate over there and find out what this one got to say about this problem or find out what that one got to say about this problem or find out what they got to say over there about this problem. If we'll go to the father, he said, I'll bring a great nation out of you, a great nation out of you. Mm. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. My, 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 my. Keep your eyes on the prize. Yeah. Yes. Don't turn away. Amen. Although you may be messed up on the outside, you have yeah. greatness on the inside. And remember, God can bring greatness out of a greatness. To God be the glory. <laughs> Amen. 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 Oh, Jesus, it ain't over. Mm. It's not over until God says it. Oh, it's over, and until He says it's over, you still gotta push. You yes. still gotta pray. You still gotta read, and you still gotta worship and praise your way through whatever it is that you're going through. Because there is greatness in you. There will forever be greatness in you. You may not understand what you're going through. You may not understand how it's going to pan out, as the old folks can say. But one thing is for certain, and two things for sure. God got you. Oh, my God. He has you. Yes. And he has you in the palms mm -hmm. of his hands. He will never leave you nor forsake you, but he has you and he will bring greatness out of you because he put greatness in you. Yes. Love you to God be all the glory. Mm -hmm. Father God, we say thank you, O oh Lord. And we ask God that for every ear that has heard the message and the words, God, that you have given. Oh God, we ask, Lord, that you will bring forth deliverance, Heavenly Father. You will bring forth peace. Oh God, you will bring forth satisfaction to their souls. Almighty oh, God, Lord, we thank you, oh God, right now, Lord. And we lift you up on high right now, God, to do everything, God, that you see fit to do in the lives of your people, Heavenly Father. God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that every word was a established and profound oh god every word heavenly father will fall not to the ground heavenly father but shall reach the heavens lord and we pray for that person right now oh god that feels like there is no greatness in me i'm messed up from the flow up oh god but lord let them know god i ask lord that you release your spirit to them right now heavenly father let them know that there is love and there is a god that cares for them and no matter what there will will be greatness to come out of them on today. Oh God, if they will continue to follow your
your lead, oh God, and hold to your hand. God, we thank you, Lord, right now, oh God, and Lord, for anyone that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. God, we ask, Lord, now, Heavenly Father, that they recite these words. Heavenly Father, I need a Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God and that he died on the cross yes. and that I will forever live and, and, and be, Heavenly Father, what they would you would have them to be in the name of Jesus. And God, they will receive you and their lives will forever be changed. Yes. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes. I do. What I do. Stop recording. Oh my God.